If you're going to try and show your work off, if you're trying to sell it or you're trying to post it on Instagram, one of the things that can determine how well it does and how well it's received is the quality of the photo of your work. Photographing artwork is quite difficult if you've ever tried it, and I know I struggled with it very early on in my career, but I'm going to share with you some of the tips that I've picked up along the way, and hopefully it'll make your life easier when you're photographing your own artwork. One of the most important things is the lighting. And there are two ways we can do this. Let's start with the most simple method first, which is taking photos outside. You want a nice dry day with some bits of sun. You don't want to be taking pictures in the bright sunlight, you want to find an area of shade. Then you want to set up your camera on a tripod and set your picture off the floor on an easel. You don't want to be lying down on the floor and you don't want it just sitting there because it doesn't look very good. Here's a picture of the camera that I'm using. I'll talk a little bit more about this later in the video. Okay, now let's talk about how I go about taking photographs of my artwork indoors. One, make sure your desk space or your working space is clean and tidy. Then you want to remove all unnecessary paintings and everything that's going to distract from the one that you want to take the photograph of. With my setup, I want to move my tiger to the centre. You could use natural lights, but I like to shut the curtains to remove any outside glare. So this is my setup. I have my camera set about five feet away on a tripod, and then my painting on my wall easel surrounded by three lights coming from every angle. This is the tripod that I use, and these are a close-up of the light strips, one at the right-hand side, one at the top, and one on the left hand side all surrounding my wall easel. I have pins in that wall easel so that I can raise pictures up if I want to. I am planning a video of a studio tour where I will go through my entire studio setup, show you all my lighting, my camera equipment and everything that I use to create these YouTube videos and my paintings. I'm not sure when that'll be out because my studio is still sort of being built, it still needs a bit of tidying up, still needs some final touches, but let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing. Now on to get the piece levelled up in the frame. You don't need to go zoomed in all the way. You can leave a little bit of a border around it, which you can crop out later in Photoshop. Another thing that people are considering when they're trying to take these really, really good photographs is their camera that they're using. I am quite comfortable just using my phone to take photos. It's got a really good camera and I know there are better cameras out there but it is perfect and completely usable for taking really good photos for Instagram and photographs for websites and competitions. Now, I do actually have a DSLR camera and this is what I use for taking photos and filming videos. I don't have a special lens on there, I just have the standard kit lens that came with the camera and it works perfectly for me for taking photos that are sharp and in focus and quite high quality photos. I thought I would show you a little bit more of my process. Usually I do this on Photoshop but I don't have a way of screen capturing on Photoshop so I'm going to show you on Procreate using my iPad. So the first thing that I want to do is try and just square this off a little bit. So I use the distort function, let me just zoom out, I use the distort function just to Try and square everything off, just adjusting it slightly because the idea behind you taking the photo perpendicular to your piece or facing your piece head on is that you are reducing the need to do these alterations in Photoshop. Make a selection of your piece. So in this case, I'm going to use the rectangle tool and you can select to the ends of the piece and then copy it onto a new layer. If you then resize the layer on Photoshop, you can adjust it however you like. So in this case, just to make it easier for me, I'm actually just going to scale up my image to fit the screen. But in Photoshop, I don't recommend scaling up images. Then what I usually do is adjust the curves. 
so I want to adjust all of the different colours on here to try and get it to a point that I like. And just playing around. Actually one of the really good apps that you can use if you are just doing this on your phone is just the iPad photo app. I'm going to click edit. You could click auto if you wanted to but I don't really like to do that. I like to turn down the exposure and the brightness and then just play with the highlights. The shadows, you don't want to make it too dark. The contrast, usually I find that I want to decrease the contrast, decrease the brightness, but then up the black points a little bit. Sometimes it can be a little bit blue, so I want to decrease that saturation, increase that vibrancy, but then increase the warmth, just to knock back some of that blue. I always like to increase the sharpness and touch and the definition and then if you notice around the edges of the piece that there might be a little bit of too much being exposed you can always just put a touch of a vignette on and I actually did an airbrush vignette on this piece that hasn't shown up on the photo so I am actually matching it closer to that picture and then there we go so I'll show you the before and the after of this and see the difference a little bit of photo editing makes. I'm sure there are more complex methods of doing this and that may produce better results but for me and for a lot of people out there this is just perfect, it's quick, it's simple and it's easy to do. If you're thinking about photographing your artwork for the purpose of selling your pieces then why not check out this video here where I describe my process for packaging and sending my artwork. As always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.